Hey everybody, happy Sunday. I hope that wherever you are and whatever you are doing, you are having an amazing weekend. It is the last day where we're going to have nice weather and then it's going to rain a lot and it will rain through the weekend. It's actually Tuesday when I'm recording this, so I feel like I am cheating. But look, just a week of nice sunny weather where the temperature has been in the 20 degrees Celsius range, so upper 60s, low 70s, and we've got action on the apple trees. So this is one of our dwarf apple trees. And then over here, we've got the cherry tree. It is doing the same thing. It is getting ready for awesomeness. I'm hoping the smell, by the way, of all of these is amazing. I am a super taster, so I can smell all of the trees starting to wake up and it's lovely. Uh, the the Gravenstein, Gravenstein, I can never remember which way round it is. It is still asleep for the most part. We have started to see some growth here. So look, we've got one here, one here. But for the most part, still very much asleep. But that's okay because this one tends to fruit a little later. But if we walk uh, from, from all of these three trees and then we walk up the garden a little bit, you'll see that the older tree is also starting to think about doing things. This cherry tree is starting to create some uh, some fresh growth. And then if you look at this one over here, same thing. Look at this. All of these are starting to do wonderful, wonderful things. So I feel incredibly lucky. I haven't done any planting this week. Partly because I knew the rain was coming, partly because I've been busy. But things are finally starting to think about spring and it's gorgeous. We've got very little action here with the parsnips. But that's okay, because parsnips do take quite a long time to do things. I do think we've got some parsnips coming up here. This is fresh today. Yes, yes, these are parsnips coming up. So the parsnips are coming up in this one, but not in that one, which is sad. This happens sometimes. We've had some glorious sunshine this week, and that has meant that we've been able to do so much um, solar generation on the roof of the home, which has been truly amazing. But even the roses are starting to wake up. Check this out. These are some of the fresh leaves that are growing literally in the last few days as these roses wake up and get ready for a new year. I may or may not cut them back. I haven't decided yet. I guess we'll have to decide uh, sooner rather than later. When you're watching this, I think what will be going on is while I'm filming this on a Tuesday, hopefully by the by the weekend, I will be back in the greenhouse and planting more seeds. But I can feel the heat in here. Had a really hot, warm day. Let's sneak in here to make sure that we don't lose any of that extra heat. So the other day, I planted some cucumbers and some tomatoes. Look at that, all of that lovely, lovely, heat just to keep things warm. I've got the vents open on here. What's over this? These are cucumbers on this side. That's probably come up first. And then on this side, these are my tomatoes. And then over here, these are my onion bunches that I am trying to just keep going just a few more days. Hopefully this weekend I'll be able to put these in the ground. I can probably do that when it's raining. That's fine. Um, they smell amazing. <laughs> and here's a ball because I have had helpers in here. It's been lovely. I've been coming in here and I've been putting, uh, this is my little potting station and you can see some, some, uh, some labels there. I've been doing my potting on this side and then transferring things over here uh, to start them germinating. They've been going over this side because this side is warmer and that has helped. I don't know why I've got a kettle lead there, but never mind. We'll figure that out later. Actually, this is, oh no, that's a good kettle lead. Maybe that kettle lead should go inside. I've been putting things over this side to uh, 
to germinate because this side of the greenhouse is substantially warmer than the other side because this side gets the most sunlight. Also, I don't know what's happening with these fuchsias. They may or may not get warm. I know over the next few days the temperature is really going to start plummeting. But the nice thing about this massive greenhouse is that once it gets warm, it takes, you know, a few days for the temperatures to drop. And it's noticeably different inside here in terms of temperature than it is outside. Let's talk about the chickens, because I know this is called Chicken and Garden Update. So let's see how the chickens are doing. How are you doing, Ashley? Ashley, chuck, chuck, chuck. Let's see if she'll come out. Chuck, chuck, chuck. I can hear her. She is making Ashley noises inside the chicken coop, inside the broody coop. Can I come in? Knock, knock. How are you doing? She's a lot, lot happier than she was. Her eyes are open. She's eating. She's drinking. She was chilling out here in the sun earlier today. But I am going to shut this off now because stuff. Um, interestingly, there is a pervasive smell around here, a not very nice pervasive smell, and I can't decide if it is a neighbour who is spreading manure or if there is just something that's died over here. It smells more like manure than anything else, but I don't think it's coming from the chicken coop. So I'm a little bit confused as to where it is coming from. Charlie, you're not going to go after me. No, Charlie. You're a good boy, aren't you? No, you're a good boy. He's in a bit of a weird... Yeah, see, he wants... To... He, he doesn't like sandals. For some reason, he doesn't like sandals. He's never liked sandals. I don't know why. So I'm going to wait until I don't have sandals on to put the chickens to bed. But there is one hen who does need to go to bed because she has a habit, a nasty habit of sneaking in. And that is this hen around here. It's always this one hen. She's always out when she shouldn't be. Come on, baby. Do you want me to put you back in? If I do that, will you go back in? Come on. Chuck, chuck. Go on. Of course not. She's going to jump back in that way. So... Maybe I will put all the chickens to bed now that Charlie's here. Excuse me, Charlie. Go on, back in. Come on, chicks. Come on. Come on. No, no. Oh. Now I've got four hens out. Well, that's how not to put chickens to bed. It's live. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll put them. Um, I'll put them to bed through the top of the, the coop which is what I always do when they get out. Come on. Come on. Chuck, chuck. Come on. Naughty, naughty chickens. Which means I have to go round to the other side of my chicken coop and encourage them to jump back up, which they will do eventually. This is what happens when you have a border collie who likes running around the chicken coop. He makes this little, little race which I'm sure is great fun for him, but not for us. Come on, chickens. They're being naughty. And as you can see, the weather is starting to turn. We've got some clouds coming up here. Come on, you naughty hens. Come on. Up you go. One. Come on. Up you go. Up, up. <laughs> They're like, no. No, we will not go up. Oh, well. Never work with chickens, animals or children, apparently. Chickens, I guess, are, are animals. But they're mini dinosaurs, so, so they get their own thing. Because mini dinosaurs are very scary. Come on. Chuck, 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 chuck. Anyway, <laughs> that is everything that's going on here in the garden. Plus the chickens. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. They're, they're finding all the things that they weren't allowed to find earlier, including Charlie, who is a grumpy so-and-so. Come on. Get away from my...
get away from the greenhouse. Come on. Back in. Go on, Charlie. Go on. Go on. <laughs> now you've got yourself in a muddle. Come on. Be a be a smart boy. There you go. Come on. There we go. Hopefully they'll jump up in a second. But I think for now, I'm going to bid you adieu. Tell me what's going on in your garden this week. And um, if you have chickens, are they as disobedient as mine? Have a great week. Be kind. And I'll see you next weekend. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room. Or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people that help make this channel possible by funding it through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, $10.08 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Ralph Koenig, Mr. Eldritch, Dwayne Edegar, and Corey Singletray. To join our list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your week of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at the address is listed below. And of course, if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store link in the down below as well. This month, we are celebrating wrangling Evie Fudd with a fantastic t-shirt design by our in-house artist and animator, Erin. Get yours today by heading to our Redbubble store. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving! <laughs>